Greetings, everybody. We're really excited that you're here today with our Google Hangout on customer service. I'm really excited today that I have two guests joining me who we have found exemplifies customer service in the real estate industry, and I'd like to introduce you to them right now. First, we have Lane. Lane is founder and president of 8Z, a brokerage company in Colorado and a few areas in the California market. He came to real estate after a career in technology and working at Zip Realty. He has built 8Z on the premise of using technology to create efficiencies in the real estate process and better connect with consumers. Uh, 8Z is part of our beta brokerage program, so welcome, Lane. Thank you, Amy. And also Susan. Susan is from Better Homes and Gardens Move Time Realty in Arizona. Um, the company was established in 2007 in the local mar right after the local market uh, started its downturn. You and me, Susan, we both started companies right when the market went down. Susan and her team identified uh, this market challenge and shifted focus from their new home sales expertise and became trained in selling real estate REOs and distressed properties, which we know were big in the Arizona market. And uh, Susan attributes the brokerage's steady growth throughout the past five years to her team's adaptability to market changes and innovative thinking. So selling real estate, of course, is a very service-focused business. But even beyond our industry, many trends point to customer service as a major point of focus and distinction in coming years. In fact, many say that companies will almost undoubtedly break away from the pact in the new economy that focus obsessively on customer service. So I have some questions for our, our panelists, and I'm going to get right into the guts of the uh, program. And again, thanks everybody for joining us today on our Google Hangout for September, focusing on customer service. And um, we'll have the recording, but we're really glad that you're here with us today. So I'm going to start with Elaine. Elaine, what are some things you do at your brokerage in Colorado and California for customer service that are different and effective? Sure. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and I, I'd start by saying at a high level we are a net promoter uh, score company. We are a net promoter score driven company. It's our, our most important metric and one we track diligently and for those who aren't familiar with the net promoter system it basically you ask every close client what, what is the likelihood that they would recommend your company or the realtor they worked with to a friend and based on the results of that question and a, a really strict measurement of that, it gives you a pretty good idea of, of how you're doing. Because uh, ultimately in real estate, right, we want everybody to recommend us and refer us. So that's the main driver for us. Everything underneath uh, flows from that. So you must get some pretty inf interesting information with that. Um, can you give us some highlights of things that you have found that were instantaneous things that you changed or continued as a result? Sure. Uh, you know, the good news is we get a lot of great feedback, and that's because we've got some great realtors, and, and the stories are, are very heartwarming, and they're very, they're, they're definitely morale builders. But uh, occasionally we get um, a response, because you also ask an open-ended question after that question of what, what would you do differently, or, you know, comment, just open-ended from the consumer. And what I've found is, if you have a feedback loop where you're not afraid to go back to the realtor and tell them uh, what the consumer said, even if it's negative, a lot of times the, con the agent is completely oblivious. They're, they thought it was a great transaction. They have a big blind spot um, about what the, what the client thought. And you can almost always recover it. If you just get in there, you know, address what the, the, the client's concern is, and, and get the realtor right back into it. And, it's a little uncomfortable at first, but eventually, if you're in a, you know, a team environment and not a shame and blame kind of culture, it works. Then, then that client doesn't have a blind spot. And Lane, one more question: What kind of technology are you using for that program? Uh, we use an online, you know, survey program, um, okay. Survey Monkey. Uh, but uh, you know, they they, um, they need to come up with a better name. Yeah, they do, right? We're actually looking at some different kinds of products out there right now that um, we can, we'll talk about service a little bit later, but we're going to be implementing one at, at Better Homes as well. And we've been doing a lot of research on what would be the best product. But um, I love your point about 
getting right back in there because sometimes we do have rose colored glasses on how we think the consumer um, imagines or <laughs> reacts to, to the transaction. So great point. Thank you. Hi, Susan. Thanks for being here. I'm going to ask you the same question. What do you do at the brokerage level uh, for customer service that you think sets you apart and is effective? Well, a lot of what we do is obviously use the brand Better Homes and Gardens. So uh, we do send out uh, magazine subscriptions and um, always ask you know, for folks to respond back to that. We get a very positive response on those. Um, also for customer service, we send out personalized thank you notes from me as the broker and the owner. And um, they go over very well. We get um, a lot of feedback on those. And people are more than welcome. To, I give them my personal cell phone number to call as well as the office number. So if they want to reach out to me, they certainly can. And we get a lot of, I get a lot of calls. I get calls seven days a week. And the good news is, is that I say I'm going to answer my phone and respond back within a couple of hours, and I do. Give us an example of one of those that you've recently got that was notable to you. Um, I received a call from, we do a lot of property management as part of our brokerage in addition to the residential side. And um, obviously our Better Homes and Garden signs are prominent in a lot of communities. And I received a call from somebody off of a sign. And they had actually said that they called our agent and our agent hadn't responded back in the 15 minutes that they called before. <laughs> and so they called me and um, I answered my phone, of course. And they said, you're the green people. And I said, yes, we are. And they said, oh, it's so nice to hear your voice. We love your signs. We want to rent one of your homes. And you just have the best presentation out here. So it was great to get that feedback and for them to know that we do answer our phone when we say we're going to. Isn't that amazing? We're down to 15 minutes. I mean, every other place, the internet and every other service business out there has made us expect that. So why not on the most expensive thing you'll ever buy or rent in your life, right? 15 minutes. So true. So, um, let's, I'm going to have a couple more questions, so let's keep on moving on. Thanks, everybody, for your, for your comments. Another question, and this kind of overlaps on what I just asked. What is your brokerage's biggest customer service success story, and what did your team learn from it? I'm going to flip back to you, Lane. Um, I'm sure you have quite a few, so tell us your best. Well, you know, it's hard to pick one out, but um, I'll tell uh, two stories, and they both involve the word Jack. J-A-C-K. First one is a pre-closing <laughs> pre um, customer success story. Uh, one of our clients had a concrete pad of the neighbor that was encroaching across the property line. They didn't feel comfortable, even though all kinds of legal documents had been written up that the pad would be removed by the neighbor. They didn't feel comfortable closing. So our, um, our AT realtor actually uh, rented a, a jackhammer and went out there and took out the pad. Uh, so we call that, sometimes you just got to man the jackhammer. Uh, so they eliminated the, the concrete pad. The second one, which I think is more important, because I think customer service really comes into play post-closing. I mean, everybody in real estate knows we'll do anything you know, to get to closing, and that's a good thing for our clients. But post-closing, I think, is where you really differentiate. And, and in this case, uh, it was a, a, a situation where a, a, a a patio had, had settled. Gee, we've never, any of us have never seen that. Uh, but the AT Realtor uh, got in there and, in this case, got mud jacking. Uh, they didn't do the mud jacking themselves, but the house was eight years old, went all the way back to the original builder, got the original builder, even though they didn't have to contractually, uh, to come in and, and mud jack the patio. And I think that just points to you got to be there post close. I, lo I love that. I, we recently heard about um, one of our brokers who, when everyone's at the closing with permission from the uh, consumer, they send in a cleaning company to clean the house while they're at closing. So when they do have the truck move up, they're not doing that last minute cleaning in the bathtub and in the cabinets in the kitchen. I thought, what a great value. So Susan, up to, over to you. What is your made, one of your uh, great success stories for customer service? I think one of our most recent ones actually involved, you know, with real estate, of course, there's so many different parties that are involved in the process. And for us to have a third party like a title company recommend us or gloat about us is huge. And we just had a transaction take place where the, the closing wasn't smooth, shocking enough, <laughs> um, and there were some road bumps along the way. 
and uh, some roof challenges and a few things that we had. And we have monsoons here, so we had a little bit of a challenge with some wind. But um, our agent just was there every single day. They were there with brooms sometimes, making sure that the house looked as good as it could and was there at the title company and was there at the closing and actually brought a little dust bucket and a pan green, of course, to show that we care uh, just for the next monsoon that might hit. And the title officer was so impressed that she took the time to write me a letter and also let us know that they were putting us on the very top of their preferred agent uh, manual in their office. From both of your stories, it sounds like you have a great communication with your, your staff and your sales associates. The fact that you know about everything that's going on and you can be instantaneous tells a lot about your management style. So I'm sure there's more to that as well. But not every brokerage knows what's going on until it's almost too late. I'm sure you would agree with me on some of that. Uh, another question for you all. Um, as a broker, your, cus your customers are also agents. So what are some of the things that you do for your agents that are, you know, really above and beyond the norm? Now, how do you make them feel special about being part of your team? And uh, Lane, I'm going to go back to you. We'll flip-flop here. Okay. Great. Uh, thanks, Amy. You know, this is where I'm going to go off the reservation a little bit because uh, at 8Z, we we have a culture where our, it's very important that we're clear about who the consumer is. And as part of the recruiting, what we call selection process and the onboarding process, uh, when new agents come aboard, we make it very clear that I actually look them all in the eyes and say it directly that you are not my customer. Our customer is the same. It's the home buyer and the home seller. Your customer is the same as my customer is the same as everybody who works in this building. Uh, and, you know, that doesn't mean we don't value the realtors and, and know that they're at the, you know, the tippy end of the spear, so to speak, because they are the client interface. I mean, that's how the client knows our company. So they're incredibly important, but they're important as team members, not as customers, and, and we just don't cross that line. Um, there's got to be some background here with the off the reservation, the tip of the spear. There's got to be another outside interest where we're getting all these analogies from. That's a converse, oh. another conversation. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Mine would be gardening, unfortunately. But <laughs> oh. It would be pruning. I was, I was, yeah, I was a marine pilot in another life, so some of that's oh. where that comes from. That's cool. How about you, Susan? And really, you know, it's like, what do you, what do you do that make your agents feel? above and beyond. And, and to Lane's point, and I, I appreciate the information and the comments, Lane, because that's what makes your company special, where you live, work, and play. So that's awesome. Susan, how about you? You know, I think for us, our philosophy of one team, one dream is something that goes through our entire company and always has. Um, it's, you know, being a realtor is a very difficult job. You have to ride the highs and take the lows and make it work together. So um, as the broker and the owner of the company, I am their true cheerleader. Um, I'm always available should they need to vent, cry, kick, scream, whatever it is. Um, I want to make sure that they know that they have somebody in their corner when things aren't going well. I have weekly meetings called boost meetings, boost your sales, boost your morale, whatever the case may be. And um, individual agents come in and get to spend one-on-one -on -one time with me. And we use that time to really cover a variety of things. Sometimes I'm really just a guidance counselor. Um, other times I'm a psychiatrist. Sometimes I'm a cook if they need a cookie. Um, whatever it is to make their day and to get them back on track and know that they have someone in their corner to help them. Okay, great. Lane, it looks like you want to say something. Am I seeing it? Seeing that, or is that just uh, you moving in your chair there? No, I, I was uh, just, a, you know, I, I think what Susan said is, is great. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, if you have any questions, those of you who are listening in, we're going to take some Q&A at the end. We'd love to start seeing your questions pour in, and we'd love to hear what you're doing with customer service. We'd love to share your ideas as well today. What companies do you emulate for customer service? A lot of us have our favorites, and it definitely inspires us and helps us define our customer service experience because we always remember those great experiences in other parts of our lives. So, Lane, I'm going to start with you. Who do you emulate um, from other industries? Sure. We, we look a lot toward Nordstrom uh, and for a few different reasons. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll say that 
a lot of times on these uh, webinars or at a conference or whatever, you know, guys like me stand up and talk like everything's peachy keen and, and perfect and customer service is never perfect. I mean, we're, we just feel like in real estate in particular, we're just starting to scratch the surface of uh, providing a consistently excellent customer experience. And so, uh, you know, I'll preface everything I say with, we don't pretend to have it figured out, but we look at Nordstrom and they've got a lot of things figured out. And, you know, what we like about Nordstrom, I actually sent our entire staff over there, gave them a gift card and said, shop for an hour, two hours, buy something, come back and tell me your experience. And uh, the ladies bought some nice shoes. And but what was amazing is everybody came back with, with these amazing experiences. And it's because their salespeople are really good. They're experts. They have autonomy. Um, and they can freelance, if you will. It's a very personal transaction when you're buying clothes. You know, not as personal as houses, but it's comparable. Uh, but yet they, they still operate within a framework that delivers consistently, not cookie cutter service, but consistently excellent service. So we, we look toward Nordstrom. So what have you transferred from Nordstrom's over to your business? Well, what we transfer is, uh, we have a way of practicing real estate and whether it's working with a buyer or a seller we have a framework that we actually give to the consumer as a promise and it's company-wide uh, and that promise we have to meet and those touch points we have to meet uh, and the service the delivery those things have to be met but it's not a cookie cutter uh, approach because everything in real estate is so personal so you've got to have great realtors who can who can you know think on their own feet who can come up with solutions that are not on a piece of paper and uh, at the same time we've got to meet a minimum level of service and you know I think there's a lot of brokerages where let's face it telling realtors what to do is not always easy uh, and well received <laughs> <laughs> well, we are triple A personalities, which actually leads me to my last question on that before I go over to Susan. Lane, how do you follow up with your agents? Is it um, with technology, face-to-face? -face? Is it a weekly um, Skype? Or what, what are you using for your, yeah. your contact point with your agents? Sure. We, we love uh, technology, but not, not when it comes to, you know, dealing with, uh, culture. So we're a face-to-face -face company. That means our teams meet. We meet as a kind of a, a, a big team, you know, 75 plus realtors. We do monthly training together, um, you know, and we try to have a lot of touch points. Um, so we believe in face-to-face, belly-to-belly. Well, as I always say, technology is to get you face-to-face -face and belly-to-belly. -belly. And uh, uh, it's uh, interesting. I had a call uh, this morning when we were setting up for my son who has my book of business and as much as he uses, he's totally paperless. It's still just getting in eyeball to eyeball with the, cl the client and then being able to make sure that you get the uh, transaction. So anyway, thank you for that. How about you, Susan? Can we really look towards the Ritz-Carlton um, as far as a company that does exceptional customer service? and they have a motto, ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And when you look at that and how it relates to real estate, you know, everyone needs to be treated with the utmost respect, no matter what the transaction is or how challenging it's become. And if you use that, and in every transaction, just realize that you need to treat people, they need to be accountable, of course, we need to be accountable. Um, we need to be accountable to our clients and our vendors. We need to be accountable to me as the broker. But if we treat everyone with that underlying thought of, you know, serving and being ladies and gentlemen, helping other ladies and gentlemen get what they want to do, whether it's buying or selling or renting, we find that that's a great way to really start any transaction. So, Susan, how do you translate that into your business? Well, we do what we say we're going to do. And the Ritz-Carlton actually has 12 steps that they repeat every single day, and they go over um, a particular rule that uh, they need to follow every day, and they train on it. And a lot of what we do is, you know, as we're going through our sales trainings and things like that, is we pick one thing. Maybe it's follow-up. You know, how are you going to follow up? What's the time frame to follow up? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? 
what are the correct words to use? You know, do we have to use slang sometimes, or is it, you know, what's going to be the best way to deal with that particular situation? So we really try to, to take one piece of the puzzle and focus on it during sales meetings or conversations that I have on the phone or whether someone stops in the office. Did you send um, your agents or do your agents go to the Ritz-Carlton training, the actual physical training? I personally went to the Ritz-Carlton training myself and took all of the goodies home with me to train. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. That's great. <laughs> Have either of you ever done um, a coaching certification to be able to coach your salespeople to extreme customer service? Have you either of you ever done that? Amy, I'm a. Uh, is that a specific program, Extreme Customer Service, or? No, that's that's my name. Um, reason. Oh, okay. Um, there's a program. There's many of them out there. Um, I've taken one called Integrity Coaching, and I'm actually going to go back and get recertified, and we're going to bring it to our brokers to see if any of them want to, to follow along. It's in Nashville. It's in Phoenix. Uh, it's a program where you learn. Um, it's kind of like many of us are coaches, but we know the tune, but we don't know the notes, and it gives you economy of scale, so you effectively could coach. One person could coach 25 people a month effectively and not lose a beat and still be able to continue business. It's knowing the process, the questions, how much you can actually coach a person at, at one time. So I was just wondering if any of you had done that. Um, I'm going to go personally going to go back and, and get certified because I think it's uh, sometimes we forget how to do it effectively and I think that's important with customer service and especially with our, our agents. Just a thought. Um, how about, uh, I have another question for you all, um, how does your brokerage, and I think Lane you kind of covered this but I'm going to ask it again anyway, how does your brokerage determine if a consumer has had a good, bad experience with your company or, or agent? Uh, yeah, and I alluded to it earlier, um, but just to, you know, I, I, it's subtle but we survey every client, not just clients that are company generated leads, so to speak, we have, you know, uh, we have that part of our pipeline, but we survey every every client that closes, uh, which obviously you've got to have a high level of trust with with your realtors um, to to do that, and uh, and that is a as I said, we follow the Net Promoter Score system, uh, and that provides direct feedback that gets circulated in a timely manner back to the realtors who uh, the clients who was surveyed and then also you know a, comp a summary report that that comes to all the team leaders and 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 myself okay great how about you Susan I like Lane's idea of survey monkey I'm gonna probably borrow that one um, we do more of a, a passive approach right now we send out our notes we do ask for feedback um, via email as well as in our thank you notes um, where people can reach back out to me um, it comes to me directly so if there's anything that needs to be said, I can address it quickly and immediately, which I think is the best way to handle any challenges if there are some. But really right now it's just through email and thank you notes and always asking for any feedback or any comments they wish to provide. So if you, how would you determine a bad or good or extremely good or extremely difficult situation? I guess you both have a handle on that through, throughout the whole transaction. So you'll be ready to react at the end or when you need to, I'm assuming. Right. We, we try to be proactive if there's something going on. We try to get ahead of the curve a little bit because no one likes to have those fire drills and surprises. So we, I try to stay um, you know, involved if there is something that is starting to go awry a little bit just to make sure that we can adapt quickly and make sure that we get it back on track. What percentage of people get back to both of you on the uh, surveys? Do you have any percentages? Uh, for us, not enough. We're just under twenty percent. So that's the average. That. That's the average. No, lane. Get, yeah, <laughs> I know, but we'd love to get. We don't. We don't operate on the average. <laughs> I know. We extreme. And we're extreme. We're actually looking at a product called RealSatisfied.com. It's an Australian yeah. survey product. Um, they keep this the questions very focused. And Susan, you're going to hear about that at Broker Summit. We're going to be bringing that to you all. But it is, uh, they have a much higher return on the surveys, so I'm very intrigued by that. And um, that's their secret sauce, apparently, that <laughs> we're going to have to pay for. <laughs> uh, yeah. But they do get a, a, a higher um, 
I think it's between 25 and 30, and we're hoping to uh, get it up higher than that. Because the more that you hear, uh, the better for sure. Um, how do you handle any complaints, customer complaints that you do get? And again, we've kind of covered it, but I'd love for you to just kind of hit this one head on. And I'll I'll start with you, Lane. Sure. I, you know, I think the key is having a constructive environment and not a you know blame and shame kind of environment because everything flows from that. And if uh, if you try to address the problems um, to solve them instead of punish people, um, it's a better approach. And you tend to get, you know, the the realtors they want to solve. They don't want a disgruntled client out there. They want someone. And in the net promoter world, you can take someone who's a detractor and turn them into a promoter. So that's the whole mindset we have. How do we take a detractor, turn them into a, a promoter? And a lot of times it's pretty, it's pretty easy. They'll tell you exactly what they want. And it's just asking the right questions. Is net promoter, I am feeling a little ignorant. Is that a software? Is it a, is it a training? What is net promoter? Yeah, so just a quick background on it. It's a framework. It, the good, great news about it, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, we like so free. It's just, <laughs> yeah, free is good. It's just a framework. Uh, a, a consultant at Bain and Company came up with it. And you ask a, a, the simple question, would you re what is your likelihood of recommending uh, this realtor or this company? Nines and tens are promoters. If they, it's a ten box question. If they score a nine or ten, they're a promoter. Anything uh, seven and eights are just passive, and then six and anything below is actually a detractor. So it's a very rigorous scale, and the scores go between negative 100 plus 100, anything over zero, and it, a lot of industries use Net Promoter. So I would love other people in real estate to use it because we don't have a lot of benchmarks to compare ourselves against. Uh, financial services, some of the big firms use it, but... Uh, uh, love, love other folks in real estate to adopt the framework. If you just Google net promoter, you'll get page after page of, of what the framework is. What's kind of been happening, which is interesting with all the surveys and the recommendations, we finally entered into this world where most service providers never really had the ratings um, in, the, in that aspect. So I, I think we have to circle back around at the brokerage level and control it and get some good information so then we can be proactive. Uh, otherwise, it's it's really all over the board and who knows if, like you said, there's no benchmarks there either. How, how are those surveys and those recommendations? How accurate are they and how can we really uh, react from them? So I think it's a conversation we're going to see a lot more of um, from legal aspect and just how What's the reality of these these kind of surveys and uh, recommendations that are out there? Think about it. If you get one bad recommendation on Yelp, you can't get that down. And how does that impact your business? So I don't know if, if maybe we can come back to that question. But Susan, I wanted to just reach out to you and see see how you uh, you know act or handle customer complaints. Well, we have a high level of accountability here, and um, so they're handled immediately. You know, a lot of people don't want to pick up that phone and make that phone call, but um, you have to walk the talk. So the phone call is, you know, we reach out, we handle it quickly, um, and we just ask enough questions to find out, you know, exactly what the challenge was. A lot of times, you know, you get that first initial, you know, hit of this went wrong and everything, you know, went wrong, when really it was maybe one small item in an entire transaction that really had the challenge. So. We ask a lot of questions, make sure we have all the answers, and then we try to remedy it as fast as we possibly can. Do you all um, promote uh, online recommendations? Are there any sites that you like better than others? I just was wondering, maybe we could just field that question for a minute. And also, Rebecca, are you going to be giving us the questions as we get, um, we're about halfway through our questions, but we're just wondering if there are any questions out there yet. And um, maybe, Rebecca, you can reach out to us and let us know what's going to happen with that. That would be great. But what do you guys think about um, recommendations on the sites like Realtor.com, uh, Trulia, Zillow, and Yelp, and some of the other ones that are, that are out there floating around? Lane, do you have any thoughts on that or opinions? Uh, yeah, we try to be picky about what we spend our time on because as realtors and brokers, you know, there's a million things that supposedly are going to transform our business. Uh, so we we spend time on one customer review site, and that's Yelp, and that's it. We don't care about the others, you know. 
It's just they're not, they don't have enough credibility in the marketplace. And Google Juice <laughs> to no. be found, right? <laughs> well, that's that's different, yeah. It, it is pretty amazing. Um, we were um, trying to find a cabinet company. My husband's a builder, and we're trying to find these guys who do like refacing for a, a project we were working on. And we Googled their name, and the first thing that comes up, most disgusting experience I've ever had. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we called them, and they could care less. I, I don't think they really understand the significance of have someone doing a Google on a company's name, and the first thing is a, a derogatory comment from someone that was quite long. It was a very long description of their experience, and it was on Yelp. So I, I yeah. think this, we're, I think we're finally coming to terms that the consumer is going to be doing that because Comcast started the trend. Remember, Comcast we used to have. Um, they were up to a million people uh, <laughs> coming online and complaining about their Comcast service, so they had to stop it. But that first gentleman who started it, he was a uh, his handle was Comcast Cares on Twitter, and they, right. they solved a lot of people's problems. Susan, how about you? How do you feel about this? Can you weigh in? We really don't do a lot of uh, spend a lot of time on those uh, sites right now. Um, I think Yelp. When I do go online and review some other agents and some other things, I think that they are fairly reliable, um, but as far as the others, I've had no, no experience on them. Okay. Just for interest, do either of you use other sites outside of real estate for reviews like TripAdvisor or um, CNET or any others just for your personal business? It would just be interesting to hear if you do use reviews for anything else that you may purchase. Does anyone have any favorites? TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor? Yes. Lane, do you use any of those? Yeah, I spend way too much time on TripAdvisor. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah, you don't want bed bugs, that's for sure. Um, next question I have for you. How do you think customer service has changed in the real estate business over the last few years? And Lane, I'll kind of circle back around to you on that one. Sure. Uh, I would answer that as not much. I don't think our industry has changed a lot in the realm of customer service. I think uh, you know it's still a, uh, what I call Russian roulette in that you go to a typical real estate office and you walk down the hall and depending on what door you open up you could get a fabulous great realtor best customer experience of your life and then the next door you could get a train wreck. You could get the worst customer experience of your life and I don't think we're we've really moved from that to be honest. Do you believe in a consistent customer experience like the McDonald's model? Do you think that we should go that far? We can't yeah, really. Realtor, yeah, as a realtor myself, I know people confuse consistent with cookie cutter. And uh, consistency can be delivered in a very personal way. Consistently excellent service might be delivered 10 different ways. Uh, you know, I don't think we'll ever be a a McDonald's, our industry, you know, the, what happens at the kitchen table and in the car is is not making a Big Mac. <laughs> I'm writing, that's going to be my first tweet after today. I love that. People confuse consistent with cookie cutter. So I'll give you attribution, but I think that's great. I think that's poignant. And we are such a unique industry. That's, I think, what we love about this business. It's never the same. We're never doing the same thing every day, so we're always on our toes. And it takes a unique uh, individual to really succeed in this business. Not only do they have to have sales skills, but they have to have compassion. I think um, one of the things I love about real estate is that people who really have a drive to care and help can be very successful in this business. There's nothing better to get somebody into their to their home so their family can have a a great life experience. So it's it's a unique uh, personality, and like you said, consistent, not cookie cutter. How about you, Susan? What about you? I would echo what Lane said. I, consistency is key. Consistently doing the right things all the time. When you're consistently following up, when you're consistently available, when you consistently have all the information, and you're the person that you know people can count on for things, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fabulous and that's what we want our agents to be is to be that consistent person that people know they can count on and are going to receive the right way to be treated. So I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's exactly what we need to be. 
Now, Susan, you, um, we wrote, read in your bio that you did a lot of REOs. Uh, can you speak to that um, perspective of customer service, how, how you impacted that? Because that really brought you through the industry. I know you're changing things up now because the market's changed, but right. can you speak to that for a moment? Absolutely. We still do REO business um, for some of the largest uh, GSEs in the nation. And um, the market has changed a little bit, but back in the day um, when we had you know, 300 listings hit a, a town or a small town in one weekend, you know, there was a lot of negativity and a lot of misperceptions on what was going on and who was going to be buying those homes and how those homes needed to look. And again, we always go back to treating everybody the right way. No matter what type of home they're looking for, their experience still needs to be the best. They need to be, have their questions answered. Um, whether it's a bank or, or an owner that's selling the house, they still need to be treated the right way and they still need to have the answers to their questions. So that's how we went through that really challenging time. Um, we're, we're certainly on the, on the best side now. An emotional time, that's for sure. Emotional. And we have some questions queuing up, but I have two more for you all. So I think I'm going to finish those and then we'll go to the questions in the, in the chat box. Um, uh, kind of a follow-up on my first question, wh where has customer service been? And both of you said it really hasn't changed much in the last couple of years. Because of the way the market's changed and because of the way technology has impacted our business, um, notably Yelp and other tools where a person's reputation can be changed in a nanosecond, where do you see customer service going in the next five years in our industry? And um, do you think the role of the realtor or the agent will shift at all? So where do you see it going in five years? And do you think our role will shift at all? And Lane, I'll flip it back to you. Sure, I think expertise. I think it's going to be a market that favors the full-time professional expert and probably with a support team around them uh, that, can, that can fill in the gaps. Uh, but consumers are willing to, to pay and they value expertise. And, uh, you know, internet sites don't deliver expertise. They deliver data. Do you think um, having all the tools, you talked about a support team. Do you think having all the tools and making an agent effective with technology has helped in that regard in your business, make you more effective handling the consumer's experience? You know, to echo some of the things Susan said, I think how we respond to the consumer has changed. How a realtor responds to the consumer, text, mobile phone, email, obviously. Uh, you've got to be, you got to be fluent in that as a realtor. Now, do you have to figure out how to do SEO and manage your your Yelp profile? Hmm, you know, that, that that's starting to get into a realm that that doesn't actually impact the consumer directly. Okay, thank you. How about you, Susan? So the, the, Go ahead, Lane. No, that's that's all. I kind of cut you off there. Susan? You know, I think as far as things changing, um, I think it just it always goes back to the basics for us. And, you know, it's always, I, I've said it time and time again, it's always doing the right thing. It's, it's consistently following up. It's consistently being that agent that people know they can count on. And whatever stage of life they're in and whatever they're going through, knowing that you have someone you can truly count on, it's still a people business. Technology is fabulous. Um, some are better at it than others. But it's still a people business. So when you're in front of that, that client, there's no computer. There's nothing that can go on a screen that's going to take you know, the place of that personal interaction that you have. You know, it's interesting. A um, couple of comments. Lane, you talked, you spoke about how the customer is the consumer, yet you have a system where you support your agents with good tools and um, sounds like a support team so they can do their job. It's still a very special person who can be a truly effective realtor. Absolutely. And Susan, and to your point as well, um, sounds like your hands-on management style you're, you are a fly on the wall, ears to the ground, as they say. And I think that you probably know the rumblings, especially because you were experienced with all the REOs. You've probably created a habit because so many things can go wrong with those um, types of uh, transactions. 
So with that said, and before I go to the questions, what would if you had to give an, a new agent a piece of advice um, what, in regard to customer service, what would that be? What would be the one thing that you would tell an, someone getting into the business that they should, uh, they should focus on? And who wants I'll, to take it? Lane? <laughs> I'll, I'll keep the order, Susan, just because uh, I'm actually going to echo what you've said uh, throughout the, the webinar. And two words, follow through. That would be my advice. That sounds like Marine talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lane. And how about you, Susan? You know, it's true. It's it's so it's simple yet very, very challenging. Everyone talks about it, but very few people can do it, and it is follow up. Do your job. Your job is to follow up. Be a professional. Be that, you know, extra percent that other people don't do. Take it to that next level, even by a little bit. Return that phone call a little quicker. Make sure you're taking your notes. Make sure you know what your customer is really asking. We have two ears, one mouth for a reason. Listen and then respond and help out. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So we have a couple questions, and um, I don't hear Rebecca. I see some notes from Rebecca, so I'm, there's a couple in the chat box. I'm going to just start with the first one. So we have three questions, and then we'll see if anything else comes in. First question, and Lane, if you're interested in taking this, this is great. Um, you mentioned the negative co customer comment found on Yelp. How can we best monitor what is being said about our agents or company online? I'll add my two cents later, but let me repeat it. How can we best monitor what is being said about our agents or company online? Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, a very uh, handy tool is Google Alerts. And right. if you set up Google Alerts on your company name and all your, your realtors' names, uh, and you have folks monitoring that, you'll see any comments that come up. And if you're proactively managing you know, various platforms, you'll, you'll be on them all the time. But Google Alerts is a great way to just give you a heads up that somebody somewhere talked about you online. And just to let everybody know how that works, if you, you don't have to um, have a Gmail, but you do need to have a Google account. You go to google.com forward slash alerts, and we can put that in the chat box, and you can set up as many as you want. And some of the terms, I mean, some brokers will put every agent's name. They'll put the CEO name. They'll put their company name. You can also put things like um, real estate, where one that seems to work pretty well is your town and the word breaking news. It's nice to find content to share with the network, but um, I have one set up on Sherry Chris. And, um, of course, most of our brokers, so that's how I find out what's going on in our network. Um, you need to use advanced search techniques if you're going to do it, and that's very simple. It's a plus, minus, or quotes. Quotes is the term that you want. You want every word to be in the thing that Google finds. So maybe it would be quotes around, um, I would put maybe Sherry Chris would be in quotes, because I don't want Sherry and I don't want Chris. So those words have to be together. And pluses and minuses mean you can plus words or minus words, and they have to be within 10 words. So an example might be the one I always use, which isn't real estate, but it helps. Um, if you were going to do a report on dolphins, you know, the mammals, you might put dolphins, and then you put a space in a Google alert, you put minus Miami, because if you don't, most of your search results will be the Miami Dolphins. So you would do plus and minus, and you can find out about those on Google. When you set up a Google Alert, there's something called advanced, and these are called, um, the fancy word for them are Boolean functions, B-O-O-L-E-A-N. It's plus, minus, and quote, and it will make your uh, Google Alerts much more useful. Just don't put them on your kids. You don't want to find out what they're doing online. So that's my only recommendation there. How about you, Susan? Do you have any um, ideas on how to do that? You know, I would probably just do what you guys were just talking about. I think that makes the most sense. And just, you know, for us, a lot of, you know, we hear a lot of word of mouth things too. You know, even though Phoenix is a large area, the realtor community is rather small and um, news travels. And tech, you know, usually bad news travels before good news, unfortunately. So we hear what's going on a lot through a lot of our networking and things as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, one other thing that might be a good, and we have some more questions here, is some of the brokers in our network have started private Google groups. 
and the broker is some of our brokers are finding a lot more interaction and um, reaction to their uh, questions and messages to the to the agents. I think we're so overwhelmed with email. Um, it seems to be working pretty well. So I don't know if either of you are doing that, but I thought that was a good way to also communicate with the agents. Another question for you. Um, Susan mentioned handwritten notes. Are agents responsible for sending their own notes, or is this something the company is sending out on behalf of each client? The, our agents send do a, their own closing gift, so it's either a, you know whatever they want to do. Sometimes it's the Better Homes and Gardens magazine, of course, which is lovely, or um, some type of you know closing package or bucket or note, you know something that's personalized for that transaction. But they also get a note from the brokerage from myself personally thanking them. Okay, great. Um, also, um, can you repeat, uh, Lane, the website for what you were talking about before, Net Promoter? We had someone wanted to know what that website was. Yeah, and there's not like an official Net Promoter because it's a framework, but if you just Google Net Promoter Score, you'll, you'll get a, a host uh, of various folks uh, who who offer services around it, but it, there's also just in Wikipedia, there's a write-up about the system. So it's an open framework. You, it, it, uh, uh, you don't have to pay someone to use it. You can score, you, you score your own surveys. We do that internally. We tabulate our own score, uh, which is 89, which is very high. Uh, for anybody <laughs> Shameless <Net> plug. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we should start a group of net promoters. We should call them the RE Net Promoters and start getting some metrics. I'd love it, yeah. That would be yeah. great. Well, we're going to be launching that at Better Homes. I don't know I if mean, anyone else... It... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, in real estate, what question matters more than would you recommend me to a friend? You know, that's what real estate's all about. Exactly. Um, any other questions, Rebecca? Those were our three. Um, we're really glad that you've joined us today, everybody, and we hope you've gotten some good ideas and comments. We always seem to get the uh, kudos and comments after the uh, Google Hangout, not so much in the chat box. Any other comments, Rebecca? Maybe you can let me know. And as we're looking for the questions and uh, comments, if you guys want to maybe do one last wrap-up, this has been fantastic. I've gotten some great ideas. Um, let me just kind of make a couple of comments, and I'd love to hear the last wrap-up, the last thought from you both. A couple of great things that you all mentioned. I have to look at my paper. Um, one team, the one team idea, which I thought was great. Um, survey every client that closes. No blame and shame when we have uh, situations with our, our agents and our consumers. And um, I do like Lane's quote, consistent, not cookie cutter. So we have a, a personal, we have an experience with the consumer that is uh, personal to that person, but we have a consistent framework in which we work. So I, I thought those were great comments. And working the Nordstrom way and working the Ritz-Carlton way are both great um, programs. So it's kind of exciting. almost want to go research them now or say ourselves. Lane sending the people there and Susan taking all those ideas back and being the hands-on broker that she is. So I'm going to reverse it, Susan. I'm going to go to you. Any other uh, comments or last words before we sign off today? You know, I think that a lot of people, companies are afraid of reaching out and finding out what their customer experiences are because they might hear something that they don't want to hear. Um, but for us, you know, it's, I think Bill Gates said, you know, you know, your most unhappy customers are your best learning experiences, and I'm paraphrasing. So if you, if you take that, and you can then grow from it as a person, as a company, as a team, then you're only going to get better. So that's really our approach on how we handle it. So pain is gain. <laughs> that's part of our business. For sure. How about you, Lee? You know, I, I would love to, I would love it if every time one of our realtors, an 8 z -er, sat down at the closing table, they had a realtor on the other side uh, from any firm, from Susan's. Firm. I'd love to close with, with her realtors because I know it would probably be a much better experience not only for the consumer, for the realtors. Uh, I mean, we have so much inefficiency in our industry because there's realtors on the other side of the, the table that, frankly,
frankly, aren't following through, aren't doing basic stuff like returning phone calls. Uh, and what a better place it would be for all of us if we continue to raise the bar for all realtors, no matter what flag they're flying, and, um, you know, and, and close a lot of business. You know, Lane, there's a Facebook group called Raise the Bar. Have you heard of that Facebook yeah, group? Yeah. There was yeah. actually a um, question there the other day. I've never seen so many comments. And the question was, what do you do when you ask for input on showings and the agent just won't call you back? And I think I saw 108 and eight comments from other realtors. So I think it's an issue in our industry. So if we all start our little our little worlds and start creating that, then we can recruit them all to our companies and it won't matter anyway. <laughs> right. I think we had some good ideas here today. Um, I really appreciate your time, Susan and Lane, for being here. We will have the recording. And um, thanks for being on our Google Hangout today. And um, don't forget to join us next month for our next beta brokerage hangout called New Business Ventures Within Real Estate. And that's October 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thanks, everybody.